Hello, this is Dr. Lorenz at Longevity Health Institute, the one and only. A <laughs> uh, few locations here in Rochester Hills and Madison Heights, Michigan. And uh, I promise by the end of 2021, a West Side location. I keep saying that, but COVID slowed that down. And um, as we build providers, and you know, our passion and mission is to build and optimize the core of your quality of life for all and improve your overall health and well-being and including something we're going to be talking about today that incorporates this uh, device here the wabi device brain health um, and in things that are you know neurodegenerative um, but you know here at longevity health institute we're always growing advancing medicine bringing you the best in functional personalized medicine or the best of any type of medicine because we one care look deep use a personalized approach optimize your total health and care about your whole quality of life. And whether you're aware of it or not, we are educate you, educate you, educate you about prevention um, because you only know what you know. And I have a lot of people that tell me and come in here how healthy they are and how they don't see a doctor because they don't need to and they're 40 or 50 or whatever and their their quote unquote their checkup their 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 you know their appointment is uh, every year on their checkup simple easy cholesterol good blood pressure good sugar good eh, you know i don't i don't really need to see a doctor if you don't deep dive into immunity metabolism you know uh, neuroprotection cardiovascular protection immune protection you're a ticking time bomb that's coming um and again you only know what you know and if we educate you you can still thrive and not just survive and prevent a lot of age-related disease. This is why we're called Longevity Health Institute. This is why our core values and our mission and our mission statement is based on improving the quality of life for all. So sorry about that lengthy introduction, but let's talk about peptides a bit. Now I got other videos on peptides and I could, I could do just literally a 20 minute on each peptide that we use here frequently in the office. But let me talk about a few here that are for brain and neuroprotection and, and things that can really, really impact someone's um, memory, uh, slow cognitive decline, improve focus, um, improve mental uh, brain energy, and also improve what's going on um, uh, lately where I see these what we call long haulers, these post-COVID. Uh, I had a patient today actually drive up from Indiana that actually has had five months of uh, kind of debilitating, slowing him down, COVID, post-COVID symptoms, including brain fog. Uh, but let's talk about peptides. So um, the peptides I'm going to mention are Sribilicin, um, uh, also Dihexa, C-Lank, um, which one of those was previously called TP7. But these are all peptides that we use for neurodegenerative disease, mood, cognitive stability, enhancing your blood-brain barrier and that. But let me back up about how we define brain fitness. And I've mentioned this before, but, you know, protecting your brain. How can you have a really, really sharp, high acuity, uh, focus, attention, um, really, really perform well uh, in your executive brain function and stay that way, whether you're in your fifth decade, sixth decade, seventh, eighth, you know, I have a patient today, a new patient that actually said, hey, I plan on living into my hundreds. It's happened in my family. I just want to make sure I get there smoothly and healthy and, you know, can love and care and for my family and they for me. And I'm not a burden. None of us, I'm sure with aging, want to be a burden. So in that, you have to protect the, the brain. So Wabi, this Wabi device, which you see here, is this advanced EEG type of device that we use in our practice. And you've seen me do a video on this where you we get these uh, um, evoke potentials and brain voltage and brain speed and brain power. And like I call it a cognoscopy or brain fitness evaluation. And it looks at brain reaction time, physical reaction time, a lot of beta and theta waves that have to do with mood and concentration. And we can really tell where in your brain, you know, there is a neuro uh, speed or not speed, or there might be some um, weak, if you will, links. Um, we also look at the autonomic nervous system that's related to heart rate variability, 
um, and your cardiovascular autonomic system to your brain. I always tell patients, listen, your circulation <laughs> doesn't stop here, right? Your circulation is heart and body, but it also is tentoral. <laughs> it is going up, okay? So you uh, somehow we look at nowadays brain and brain health and prevention of Alzheimer's or dementia or cognitive decline is something we don't think about circulatory. Your carotids, your blood flow to your brain are very, very important. In fact, actually I can tell you here for several decades here in my practice that I've seen, when someone's got muscle tension, muscle spasm, they'll report, man, that they're just not as sharp. They have chronic headaches. That's as simple. Literally their peripheral circulation to their brain and head in that could be compromised minimally and they're just not sharp in that. So anyway, and then this is why in this test, actually we see stuff like muscle tension that's evaluated. Again, this is frontal alpha waves that have to do with mood and that. But anyway, we get scores on our Wabi device here. That is a test we do here for screening and diagnostically for all our patients, okay? Obviously like to catch them when they're 30 or 40 so we can see when they're optimal. We don't expect to find a problem, but believe it or not, we do this test and we see people that have had previous head injuries, uh, big infections in their life, um, maybe head trauma or repetitive head trauma, played sports like hockey or football or soccer or something like that. And that repetitive head trauma actually can cause some um, deterioration in full brain volume, which is brain voltage, which is essentially size. As you age, your brain will shrink. There's a lot of reasons to that that I can cover here in a second, but I want you to know um, that it is very, very important to protect your brain if you want to age gracefully. So anyway, when we get a Wabi test and we do a little bit of memory scoring in that, whether it's good or bad or horrible, we're going to still institute some preventative models and improvement models. And there's not just one, but I want to cover a, a few things here that are simple, and then I'll get into these peptides that help brain health and brain fitness. But a few things that I want you to be aware of, and even you, if you're not my patient and you haven't come into the practice with me and my providers, you should really have checked out. You need to know your zinc and your copper and your zinc to copper ratio. You need to know your lipids and particularly triglycerides. And you um, also need to know your thyroid and full thyroid panel, your T3, T4. And you also need to know your homocysteine level. Why is that? Well, because there's very, very extensive studies that are very reproducible, that there is significantly higher rates in, of people that have a poor uh, uh, zinc to copper ratio, that have, um, <laughs> my helmet's moving on me, um, that have a high homocysteine. Now, cardiovascular risks in studies start on homocysteine levels above 15, I don't like them anywhere near that. I mean, and actually anything above seven, actually I think can impair cognitive and cardiovascular effects and circulatory effects and microcirculatory effects, okay? So what we do too that protects the heart will protect the brain and vice versa. Um, but you need to have a appropriate low but normal copper. You need to have the appropriate but high but normal zinc you need to have a good normal lipid panel in your triglycerides. And there's a few conditions where triglycerides can be too low. That's right, lipids that can be too low that can compromise your brain. And studies show that you'll have earlier dementia or earlier cognitive decline. And again, you don't want that high homocysteine. So get your homocysteine levels tested. If you need a good product, we can advise you here on a good product to get your homocysteine down. I love the one from Designs for Health called um, homocysteine supreme. It has cysteine in it, methylfolate, the methyl part's key, methyl B12, very key. And these help bring down, help your liver re reconjugate and, and get rid of excessive homocysteine. Um, and most people get energy from it, but you want a low homocysteine level and you want to do some of these things. And these are simple markers. Now, personally too, hormones for me are huge. I saw a lady today because of follow-up, and this is, she's not new. She's noticing some cognitive decline. She had breast cancer. And we're gonna have to dissect that, her pros and cons of hormone replacement. She's about seven years out from stage two breast cancer.
But point being is she had an MRI that she already saw brain atrophy at 60, I believe she was 68. If you don't replace appropriately in a balanced way, hormones for women, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, men, testosterone, the right amount of estrogen, DHEA, pregnenolone. If you don't have the right hormones, and I'm telling you that particularly estrogen in women and testosterone in men, you're going to get cerebral and brain atrophy. And that equals in this, essentially, I will tell you, this correlates with brain voltage, which then correlates to speed and power and um, uh, um, neuro um, frequencies and something we call brain um, reaction times in p-values, which are evoke potentials. And essentially, your brain is not quick. It's okay. And you want to be quick even when you're 80, not just okay. All right? And that's very, very, very important. The other thing is you'll maintain executive function, which is frontal lobe stuff, later in your years. So physical reaction time, like things driving cars, operating machinery, making decisions that are on time and appropriately, and remembering things, even if they're things that you should have, um, names, numbers, accounts, passwords, etc. that's frontal lobe executive function that you need hormones for. So not to get too wordy, let's go to peptides, okay? Peptides are key, key, very, very key for brain health. I love to start with most of our patients on ipromorlin or somorlin. Those are growth hormone receptor um, uh, hormone activators. So those are enhancing your pituitary to make growth hormone. They're that natural push, okay? Um, mostly we use ipromorlin for, for reasons, but somorlin also is very effective. And anytime you enhance, even if it's a 10, 20% improvement in growth hormone with peptides like this, you will long-term seeing cognitive and cerebral benefits. But let's say we catch somebody and they have some significant decline neurodegeneratively, whether they realize it or not on a mini mental, on a, on a WABI test. Again, we do these in the office here every day. Um, covered by insurance, happy to perform them on you um, and loved ones and anybody, you know, that is a patient in, in our practice or a new patient when you come in, okay? Um, but we perform these and say we pick up something significant. Maybe you're in your 60s, maybe 70s, maybe 50s, but you have, you're worried because you, you have this increase in your family of Alzheimer's, dementia, or just earlier cognitive decline and you're worried, or maybe you've had a head injury in your past and you know that that correlates to not a great memory and not a great cognitive function as you age. So we have therapeutics. Well, ipromorlin is one of the starts of peptides. The other one is cerebral, cere excuse me, cerebral uh, lysin, cerebral lysin. And uh, the thing is, I wanna mention, I gotta cheat here a bit. Cerebral lysin is a 21 chain amino acid. Okay, and it has many, many benefits. But cerebral lysin is actually one that helps build the blood-brain barrier, helps clear or improve brain senescence, like brain debris, if you will. Um, and has a lot, a lot, a lot of improvements in um, growth hormone receptor activity. Um, but one of the most profound things is, is that when the, um, the measured levels of what's called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which means improvements in that actually have been shown over and over in animal models to uh, that, that you maintain an improved cognitive function, we saw the biggest benefit with cerebral lysin, the biggest benefit. And I see that here in patients um, actually very, very nicely. Now, there is other ones called like dihexa and c -Lank, and those are more on memory with mood issues. Um, you know, maybe memory decline, cognitive decline when somebody actually then has though some depression with it or some anxiety or mood instability with it. Then we'll use those. But again, I often start with ipromorlin as a base, uh, cerebral lysin, sometimes dihexa or um, uh, TP7 which is another name for that, and or c -Lank. Now, you can use all of these. It kind of depends on the individual. Now, one last message about 
neurocognitive decline, dementia, memory, no matter what our name is, or, or actually there's a new name, and you've heard me talk about how high blood sugars actually are very deteriorating to the brain, okay? In fact, we call dementia now um, type three diabetes, okay? But one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things, okay, is circulation. We are actually instituting in our office here a therapy that is helping microcirculation. We've done this for years with um, chelators, EDTA and a chelator to help clear plaque from carotids and aorta and arteries going to the brain. But we're also incorporating EGCG, which is a extract from green tea that actually helps restore the endothelial lining of your arteries and your microcirculation. And actually then we see actually improvement in brain voltage. And besides subjective reports of my memories getting better and improving, we actually see objective data that actually you are getting an improvement. Now, one last message, <laughs> and I'm sorry this is a lengthy video. Please share with others. Please, please, please. It's never too early and it's always too late to get your brain tested and looked at, okay? So even if you feel well, have a doctor you love that you keep seeing, come in and get a WAVI test. And actually we can put you on the right path for memory and brain health and brain fitness because we all need this because we're all living longer, but living sicker and no one wants that, right? But one last message that I really, really wanna share with you that is really, really profound. I just read this week in a study on sleep and dementia and it's such a huge correlation. And I found it one interesting thing with diet, sleep, and dementia. And I'll do a separate video on this, so keep watching, keep subscribing, <laughs> okay, and share with others, because this will be a video I'll do real soon. And that is, when you eat late, and melatonin is already going up, okay, you have a less profound insulin and pancreatic effect, okay? So no matter what you eat, even if it's health healthy at night, you're causing a higher blood sugar. You're blunting your melatonin and actually you're affecting your brain worse than even if you were um, doing anything else at night. Meaning the worst thing you can do at night is eat and drink, especially high carbs in that. And this is why intermittent fasting and fasting earlier in the day is wonderful for you, not just from a weight loss standpoint, but from a brain and neurocognitive standpoint. And basically, the, the, the take home message is here, stop eating at five and six, fast at night, okay? Definitely don't have carbs late at night, okay? And get good sleep, no matter what it takes, whether we have to help you enhance sleep, which by the way, ipromorlin helps sleep. Why? It helps your pineal gland, helps make melatonin a bit. So ipromorlin, nice little side effect, people sleep better, okay, that peptide. But you gotta sleep good because the studies show when you sleep good, and especially with fasting because you get debris clearing from your brain. It's called senescence. You actually get a little bit of senescent cell release, but you also, also improve immunity. So that's my message. Make it simple. <laughs> okay. So come get a WAVI test. Um, watch my other WAVI uh, neurocognitive videos. Um, think about peptides. Peptides are amazing. Um, and there's many of them, you know, there's over 200 peptides. We often use about 10, 12 of them here in the office regularly to help many things, weight loss, immunity, um, sleep, sex, um, libido, uh, brain, cardiovascular health. So peptides are wonderful, but essentially we're always looking at the root cause and a personalized approach to improve your health and keep you optimal. So come see us here at Longevity Health Institute, me and my providers will always bring you the best in functional personalized medicine. Be well.